Hello. Hi, friends. This is the Miss Abolfi from our Half Acre Homestead with a tea break. A tea break on canning. Now, first and foremost, I'm really glad that everybody is enjoying the frugal, the frugal living series. There are going to be people that some of my frugal living tips are going to offend. Why? Well, we've spent probably the last 15 years being bombarded by antibacterial this, Lysol that, antibacterial, 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 to the point where, you know, even friendly bacteria doesn't stand a chance. You know what I mean? <clears throat> and then there is has been the pandemic years where everybody was sanitized and masked to within an inch of their life. So there's going to be people who are not going to like the direction that my frugal, some of my frugal living videos are going to go in because I've said it before, right? I started this channel on a back, back to basics living style and back to basics is where we really got to go. Okay. Now this is all about canning though. Things I've canned, things that I can now and things I'll never can again. Okay. Let's address the elephant in the living room. Oven canning. No, it is not recommended. No, today's jars are not designed like the big old heavy antique crown jars. They're not designed to put up with that kind of dry heat. I no longer oven can. Now, if you want to can your flour, do it in a boil bath canner. Just make sure your lids are really tight and that when you take the flour out of the freezer, if you've frozen it, that you bring it up to room temperature. Otherwise, you'll have moisture condensation issues. Now, the reason I no longer oven can flour, because it's totally unnecessary. I freeze my flour for, well, my, my, my flour, the flour that I just bought at Costco last month is still in the freezer. I'm still using my last frozen flour. When I take it out of the freezer, like I put it in baggies, and when I take it out of the freezer, it's because I'm putting a new batch in the freezer, and this is going into airtight or tight sealed containers in my pantry. Why? Because any bug eggs or anything that's going to be in your flour is going to get killed in the freezing just as if you were oven canning it. So it's, you can do one or the other, just don't use the oven. Today's jars are not up to those standards. That's something I will never do again. Okay, got that? Everybody got clear on that? I do not oven can flour? Okay. Uh, I've canned things in the past that I just don't, I don't think are you know, when I first got back into canning again, well, I've always kind of been into canning, but there was a time when my health wouldn't let me do any of it. And, but when I got back into it, I was canning everything. But the biggest joke my kids would, would, would say was my mom's crazy. She'll can bacon, right? But I don't, now bacon, canning, canned bacon, and I'm out of canned bacon, but canned bacon is good for certain things. A, it's cooked. B, put the jar in warm water, strain the fat off, and then crumple your bacon into a pan because it is going to crumble. Unless you got almost solid meat bacon, that shit's going to crumble, right? And if I have a lot of it, it's coming up on its due date, whatever. And I use that bacon for other things. If I want to make a macaroni and cheese casserole and I don't have any bacon to put on top, I will take bacon, uh, a pint of bacon out. I will put it in warm water. I will strain off the fat and save it because I call that country butter. And then I will mix the crumbled bacon right in to the casserole or crumble it all over the top. As long as they see the bacon, they don't care, right? So I will can it 
There's some things like that I will can. Now listen, the reason you don't see all these different canning videos anymore is because I we live really simply. And I'm getting really excited that I'm going to have two tomato products if I get the tomatoes. I'm going to have two tomato products on my shelves. My garden medley vegetables and my spaghetti starter. And I want to dehydrate tomatoes into powder to thicken them. Do not... If you can help it, do not use up uh, your old cans of tomatoes that are coming up on their due date for dehydrating and making powder. They will taste nasty from sitting in the tin. No matter whether they're not up to their due date or not, they're going to taste tinny, right? So I basic, I, I can the basics. Fruit, vegetables, excess meat that's coming up on its date in the freezer, now let's talk about canning meat. Do not can raw pack hamburger. And I'm going to tell you why. It is a bacterial bacteria control issue. If you're putting, um, you know, cubes of stewing beef in a quart jar and you're canning that, okay, enough heat is going to get around each edge of the meat to can it properly. Think of each little individual piece of hamburger as a tiny, tiny piece of stewing beef. It can't, it's going to be of a viscosity issue, kind of like pumpkin, and we'll talk about that in a second. It's going to be a, a viscosity issue of getting the temperature correct inside the jar. Please, 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 only roast or fry your hamburger and then dry can it. Okay, and dry canning means to put the cooked meat in the can with no, and you can put, you can put broth in it if you want. All right. Do not can anything with cornstarch in it, flour or bread products in it. Why? Because a cornstarch and flour, like if you want to make a thickening sauce in your jar, it's going to separate. I did the no-no once. I canned cauliflower with a, with a mustard sauce and it separated. Two, it's, it's a bacterial issue. All right? Please do not can meatloaf. Please, A, that's raw hamburger. B, you're putting bread products in it. Don't can meatballs with bread in them. Find an alternative source of filling your, your meatballs or making your meat stretch. Use uh, ground vegetables. Folks, if you're canning spaghetti sauce, don't put dry spices in it. Dry spices, not herbs, dry spices will turn bitter over time in the pantry in a jar. And like spaghetti sauce. Trust me, I know what I'm talking about. Also, and I almost forgot about this, I have canned butter and you can can butter, but you have to clarify it first or you'll get milk solids in the bottom that could wreak a bit of havoc with the quality of your product in the end. And don't bother canning butter. If you expect it to come out the same consistency of a pound of butter, it won't. It'll come out different. But if you want to can it for baking and all those things, absolutely. You can can milk. I have canned milk when I had goats. I didn't like it. It turned tanned color, but that's because it was goat milk, not cow's milk. But in a, in, in a pinch, you can can milk if you absolutely have to, but please pressure can it. Please pressure can it. And don't try and can cheese. Follow somebody who knows something about canning milk. I am not that person. But don't can cheese, folks. Do, you know, I made the mistake once of, of getting number one when we were in Ohio visiting um, Jay Nalzero and family, right? I made the mistake of buying a couple of 10 out, uh, number 10 cans of cheese sauce and taco cheese sauce because, you know, somebody told me I could re put it into pints and recan it. Don't do that. Don't do that. You'll get the worst case of trots, if not getting very sick. Please don't do that. So you don't can anything with flour in it or, but no breadcrumbs in your meatballs. 
um, no flour or cornstarch thickener. Clear gel is modified cornstarch. That's why you can can with clear gel. It's modified cornstarch, okay? Now let's talk about pumpkin. I was, you know, the date is unknown because my first canning pumpkin video, uh, I went through a whole time where I didn't know I was using music that I shouldn't have been using. So I had to take a whole whack of uh, 2010 to 2015 videos and re-upload them with new intro music. I was the first person to can cubed pumpkin on YouTube. For the simp that I'm aware of, excuse me, that I'm aware of. For the simple reason is if you go to any of the ball books or anything like that, the older ones, they say, just don't can pumpkin. Just don't can pumpkin. It's not safe. Well, they, we call this the idiot factor. All right. This is where they just accuse everybody of not having any common sense. And they just take the whole factor out. They, they just treat everybody like idiots. Okay. Now listen to me. Just because you can buy something in a can does not mean you can can that product at home. Home pressure canners and boil bath canners are not up to the standard of commercial canners. Do you understand? So let's again talk about pumpkin. I did all the research on why they didn't want you to can pumpkin. And here's the skinny. They say no amount of pumpkin puree is safe to can. And they stick by that so people don't go, oh, okay. They don't, they don't talk about viscosity issues or anything. They say there is no way to safely can pumpkin puree to get to the temperature of a commercial canner on the inside. I beg to differ. This is where the rebel comes out in me. Well, then why can't we can it like a vegetable, which I've been doing for years. But one time, one time I can pumpkin puree. Do you know why? Because the stuff you buy in the store is thick enough to stand on. That stuff, if you, they don't want people opening a number 10 can of thick enough to stand on pumpkin puree, plopping it into their own jars and breaking it up in their pantry and canning them. You cannot can that thickness of pumpkin safely. If you clean out, peel, cube and steam your pumpkin and then you puree it, it's gonna come out the viscosity of either applesauce or baby food. That is cannibal safely. Why? Because it's not thick and dense like canned pumpkin that you buy commercially. That's common sense. But they just told everybody you can never can it. I have canned it. I don't tell you, I don't tell you, I wouldn't tell you to do it unless you're an absolute seasoned canner. I'm not talking about pumpkin pie filling. I'm talking about steamed, pureed, pumpkin that you can all that you can pour like applesauce that viscosity is cannibal and you have to do it in a pressure canner and i wouldn't do more than a pint at a time but that's a common sense move for a seasoned canner they just in the books they say no amount no no pumpkin puree is safe to can all right i'm not telling you what to do i'm telling you to use common sense if you are a seasoned canner not a beginner right so here's the, here's something else we got to talk about many 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 tomatoes today people love newer hybrid breeds of tomatoes like yellow and orange tomatoes because they they don't burn your mouth they're not highly acidic those are not safe to can in boil bath canners do you understand why because they're hybridized out of most of their natural acid so please don't, don't boil, uh, boil bath can yellow or orange tomatoes unless they are specifically said to be high acid fruit. Remember, tomatoes are a fruit. They're not a vegetable. These are my favorite things to can. 
turnips and carrots together or rutabagas and carrots together. Chunked carrots, not, not little ones because they go to mush. Green and yellow beans, apples and syrup, beets. You don't have to can your corn. If you've got a deep freeze, you, people have seen me do this. I buy every couple of years, every other year or so, I buy a, a bushel bag of corn on the cob. If I throw the whole bag in the freezer, why? Because it's nature's packaging and it's good in the freezer for up to two years as long as you don't open it like every 20 minutes. Not a fridge freezer, a deep freeze. And when you want to use it, you take the corn, you take X number of cobs out of the freezer, you cut off most of the silk and you break off the stalk, leaving the inside silk and the outer leaves. You can put that on the barbecue, on the top rack of your barbecue for about 40 minutes. Or if you've got a roast in the oven for the last 40 minutes of your roast, just pile them corn cobs in there. Why? Because they cook in their own natural wrapping. You don't have to take them apart, vacuum seal them with butter and all that stuff. You don't have to. Just make sure when you put them on the barbecue, in the microwave, or in your oven, still frozen. Do not thaw them out. That's a, that's a mistake that a lot of people have made. I no longer dehydrate raw eggs. Hear me, I no longer dehydrate raw eggs. Why? Because it was a waste of energy when all I have to do is get, when I get fresh eggs, not fresh from the store, fresh from the farmer, I wash them, I let them air dry at room temperature, and then I oil them. I oil them usually with uh, avocado oil or a little bit of light sunflower or light olive oil. Why? Because when they're washed, you wash off the bloom that keeps them uh, breathable but safe from bacteria. But if you do get if you do get fresh eggs, wash them, let them air dry at room temperature, and then oil them. And they have to be dry and at room temperature so that you're not trapping moisture or bacteria between the shell and the oil. Okay? I've seen people water glass eggs. I've tried to water glass eggs. It was a dismal failure. I lost 12 dozen eggs that way. I won't water glass them, right? I would rather oil them and put them in a, on a cool dark shelf in a basement, like a, a cold room in the basement, or in a spare fridge in your garage, your pantry, whatever, in the back of the fridge. Once they're fresh, washed, air dried and oiled, they're good for up to nine months. So why would you want to dehydrate them? It was a waste of effort and energy. All right, what else? What are some of the faux pas I have made? I've made a lot of faux pas. So what I'm trying to tell you folks is use your common sense. Just because your great granny used to boil bath can green beans and meat does not mean it is safe to do so today. With the advent of the home can pressure canner, Boil bath canning low acid fruits and vegetables and and meat is no longer considered safe at all. At all, at all, at all. Just because rebel canners do it, it doesn't mean it's okay. Like somebody pointed out to me, oven canning in commercial jars, and yes, I've done my homework since then, oven canning with commercial jars is not safe. The glass, the glass that is in commercial jars today, the jars we buy for home canning, are not up to dry oven canning. You understand? All right, that was my mistake. We are going in a new direction. Not in a new direction, we're going in an old direction. We're going to start rethinking about shopping, packaging, and waste. We've, had, we've been too entitled for too long. We need to get back to the basics of doing things that make sense. That not only just, not only save us waste, but save us money too. All right? I hope this made sense, and I hope I clarified a few things. Take care, God bless. Mwah.
So, this is the Mrs. Wolfie from our half acre homestead saying, you can be a rebel all you want, but the only thing you're rebelling against is common sense. Take care, God bless.